This might actually be the coolest one of these live streams yet. Not might. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the coolest one of these live streams yet because really while we have really obviously really experienced some issues yeah. over the last little while uh, delivering on the quality of the content and the, uh, the type of content that we've promised to you guys and that you guys have come to expect from us, um, I have at least three freaking awesome things to show you guys today. So first and foremost, today's video is a totally back to basics um, tech review, value products. Pretty much we look at three laptops, um, one that's $200, one that's $400, and one that's $800. And we talk about if you're buying a value laptop, uh, what the things to look for are, uh, what some of the compromises you're gonna end up making are, and you know, pretty much we end up making a recommendation, not necessarily in terms of the exact laptops we look at because they're all from, they're all from Dell, just out of convenience. We had Dell send us their, their entries at those three price points. Um, and we're, we're not married to those models, but it was more to do with what you can expect from those kinds of price points and, uh, and what we would recommend. So pretty cool video. Uh, go ahead, check it out. Um, but... The main point of today's video is to kind of show you guys what we have coming in the pipe that is going to be total return to form type content. Um, and it starts with this pile of bean bags. Yes, my friends, we are going to benchmark Ryzen Threadripper in a bean bag chair fort. Nope, 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 I'm kidding. That's not what we're doing. Um, this is the setup for one of the coolest projects that we've ever done. Um, so LG's wallpaper TV being installed as a window in my office, that is getting done now. So there's George uh, working on some of the carpentry stuff. Don't worry, we didn't have me do the woodworking. George, what, what do you think of my woodworking skills? Scale of one to 10, man. I give you a five, you a pass. A five. A pass with that. Okay, the thing about the whole pass fail paradigm, uh, you know, where 50% is a pass, is that like if you think about it, would you want a woodworker who puts in 50% of the screws building anything? No, not so much. Okay, um, so let's start then with what Alex is working on. I'll get to the TV in a little bit. This is going to be a pretty freaking cool video. So, what do we have here? Um, GX800 water cooled. MSI Ryan, the Sager NP something, it's a big number. Whatever it is. It, it has two 1080s, that one. Dual 1080s, yep. And the Predator 21X, of course. So we have on this table eight GTX 1080s. Eight GTX 1080s! Every one of these laptops runs dual 1080 SLI. So this will be the ultimate laptop showdown and we don't mean the ultimate laptop showdown that would be different this is a showdown of ultimate laptops um so alex is going to get these benchmarked against each other we're going to overclock them all and we are going to solve once and for all the supreme first world problem of what is the best gaming laptop possible in terms of performance um so that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, what else do we have going on over here? Ah, uh, yes. In this corner, uh, well, Jake isn't here right now, but I think he no, he doesn't have it up. Our laptop charging cart is here. So we're actually gonna be opening that box up today and having a look at the fruit of his labors. Um, oh. This is another one. So I'm actually going to be going over the uh, I'm going to be going over the script and the benchmark numbers and all the good stuff for this guy later on today. That's that's on my to-do list. But this is the Asrock Desk Mini 1080. That's right, baby. GTX 1080 graphics plus a Core i7 7700. I would have to assume we've got like 16 gigs of RAM in there, NVMe 32. SSD. What's that? 32? 
32 gigs of RAM. Okay, Alex apparently went balls to the wall. So we're looking at the top end configuration of this thing and it's available actually with more sort of sensible components as well. So it goes down to a GTX 1060, but you can kind of extrapolate based on how the 1081 does. The 1061 will be slower and it'll run cooler and consume less power. So this is freaking exciting to me because um, like here, iPhone SE for scale, man. Look how small this thing is. It's incredible. Or like water bottle. Yeah, well, well, you can't use a water bottle for scale. All water bottles are different. Use a banana or 1080. Yeah, a banana would work. Wait, yeah, we can use wait. A GTX 1080. Oh yeah, we can use a GTX 1080. I'm sort of, I mean, that's a Titan, but whatever, you get the point. So yeah. that is just a graphics card for scale. With similar performance, no, that's, is this a Titan X or XP? Um, no, this isn't, yeah, okay, yeah, with similar performance, actually, to the 1080 that's in there. Unfreaking real Also, Anthony is making great progress on both of his upcoming um, many core processor projects. So Knight's Landing, that's the 64-core, uh, 256-thread processor that's running on in this Supermicro board. Um, Supermicro also wanted some exposure for their case, which is why instead of just sending us over a board and a CPU, they were like, yeah, we'll send it in our case. So naturally it'll end up in the B-roll. Um, anyway, so yeah, Supermicro does do like gamer cases and stuff. So that ended up working in Windows. So hopefully that was, was that a big spoiler? Um, well, I mean, it was a spoiler for people who didn't think it would run in Windows. Yeah, and some... <laughs> Fairly educated people like Dr. Kinghorn over at Puget Systems were quite uncertain that it would run in Windows. So we've got it running in Windows. It's actually running CentOS right now, though, so that we can perform some more applicable benchmarks on it. Um, so that's cool. And speaking of things that are many, many CPU cores and pretty cool, this is instead of... Because here's the thing. Knight's Landing, not designed for conventional x86 workloads in a lot of ways like its single threaded performance is abominable i mean it's 64 cores on a single chip uh wanna wanna like slight spoiler oh yeah i'd love a spoiler well okay. oh how spoiler is it um okay well it's a little bit spoiler no too spoilery that's okay. Oh, okay that's okay we're not going to show you guys performance yet but the point is it is not designed for conventional x86 workloads i mean knight's landing the socketed cpu actually was born from um uh Larrabee. what was it called Larrabee. that's right project Larrabee. intel's gpu that never got off the ground so up until recently, I think we might have talked about this on WAN Show. It was a topic. I don't know if we ended up actually covering it. But they recently discontinued the PCI Express version of Knight's Landing, focusing on this motherboard socketed version. Um, so really, it's designed for like AI-type workloads, machine learning, that kind of thing, stuff that GPUs are good at. This guy right here is more about conventional x86 workloads. It's just a little bit older. So we're revisiting the idea of older high-end server hardware as a, a sort of a, a, a budget workstation or gaming rig. So that is what you think it is, my friends. That is a quad Opteron motherboard with 64 cores on it. So each of those is a 16 core, right? Yep. Yep. 64 cores. These are the uh, these are the eight cores that came pre-installed in one of the boards that we ordered that ended up not working. Cost us what five six hundred dollars or something like that because um, it took us so long to get the project because it was buried in the construction that it was too late for us to do anything. But anyway, anyway I'm not upset. I'm a little upset. Um, but the point is that, uh, right, you can install, well, 8 cores or 16 core processors in it. So that gives us 64 processors. I believe these are 4 gig sticks of memory, so that would be 16 per, 64 yeah, gigs. I believe so. 64 gigs of DDR3 memory. And then, of course, we've got, you know, standard PCI Express, X16. It's fine, still working, right? 
Yeah, um, still working. Uh, PCI Express X16. So we're going to look at gaming workloads, uh, workstation workloads, and we're going to be comparing against modern stuff that you can buy, like a, like a Ryzen Threadripper, for example. You know, would you be better off just buying some older server-grade stuff? Pretty cool. And, of course, I haven't shown you guys yet the progress that has been made in here. Dun, dun, dun. Check it out, you guys. The signature window wallpaper TV is in. It's in. That's right. So uh, we haven't actually fired it up yet. We haven't seen what it looks like. But I am super stoked on that. Guys, I'm reading the comments. I have no idea what to tell you about it, the stream being blocky, other than just that I don't really know what you guys expect from a front-facing camera on a cell phone as I walk around the office. Um, not really sure what to tell you guys. Um, but yes, we have a gigabit connection. So clearly, that's not the issue. Um, <laughs> all right, what else do we have going on around here? Okay, going downstairs. Ah, right. A good old fashioned build guide. So Brandon and James are working on shooting some of the steps right now. Check this out. Oh yeah, there we go. Brandon's using our fancy wireless HDMI nonsense to throw the red way up on the jib that he didn't use for the first year that we owned it, even though it was very expensive and I wasn't mad about that, which is why I'm not bringing it up right now. So check this out. Hey, that actually looks pretty nice. That's how we're doing the radiator install shot? Yeah. I like it. looks clean. looks super clean. James, on the other hand. Dirty boy. <laughs> well, you said it, not me, man. So this is going to be sort of a... Uh, uh, like a like a overkill, but yet actually not that unreasonable workstation slash like top of the line workstation slash gaming machine, in the sense that you're spending way more than you should on a gaming machine, but it's a workstation that's totally capable of gaming. Powered by powered by uh, Ryzen Threadripper. So. Um, we're using the 16 core and okay, we do show some stuff that probably doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, oh, I'm getting a, ch I'm getting a chat that apparently the case is embargoed. Well, they showed it at CES, so, um, I just won't show it anymore. Uh, <clears throat> so, right. Uh, so Ryzen Threadripper, um, uh, what was I talking about? Right. So some of the stuff we show maybe doesn't make the most sense. Like, not everybody needs 64 gigs of RAM, and they certainly don't need Cooler Master's 1,000 watt, like, made in Japan power supply. But the basic principles of the build, if you sort of swap a couple things and we cover that in the build guide, um, will all be the same regardless of what config you actually end up going with. So it's sort of a different approach that we're taking to build guides where we make the guide more like the hardware porn stuff. And then we actually talk you through some of the changes that you could make to make it a little bit more sensible. So we're trying to kind of appeal to people who want to build something like that, as well as people who are just here to like watch us build sexy hardware because it's freaking awesome. Um, what else do we have going on, I guess? I, I don't know, is that is that enough? Like, uh, to those suggesting that we enable slow mode, it is totally enabled, and we have totally sent lots of messages to our, to our YouTube overlords, asking them to figure out why the crap uh, slow mode is not working on our videos. Um, yeah, don't know what to tell you. There's nothing that we can do about it beyond what we have already done. So I guess that's pretty much it. So today's video is, uh, wow, I don't even remember anymore. Right, those cheap Dell laptops where we kind of talk about cheap laptops, uh, what you're giving up, what you're getting, what we think makes sense. And then today's flow plane release is actually something else entirely. Hold on a second here. Um, oh, cool, okay, we just got some of the, uh, we just got the footage from Protocase 
of our laptop charging cart being, uh, being born. I'm actually super, super stoked to see that. Um, so what is it? I don't, actually, I don't actually see it on here. I apparently don't have that calendar on here, which is sort of, sort of annoying, but uh, Floatplane's getting a video today too, obviously. Uh, oh, I'm still trying to upload the, I, the Apple event stream that we did yesterday. I'm trying to upload it to Floatplane, but it's not working. It seems to be like a file size issue. So if you guys are Floatplane subscribers and you didn't catch that live and you're wondering where to catch it, uh, hopefully it'll be up there soon. And it looks like it's uh, air versus water cooling. So that's a video that we did way back in the day, back in the standard definition days of the channel that um, I think was overdue for for a revisitation so we take Ryzen Threadripper which is right now about as hot as it gets and we revisit air versus water cooling is water cooling really worth it and uh, that's going up on float plane right now so I will see you guys in VOD form this is live that won't be live but I'll sort of see you guys you guys will see me at uh, on YouTube or Floatplane, depending on which of those you want to watch. Um, hey, Nick, is it live? Yeah. Cool. So video's live, and there you go. Links are in the chat. I wonder if we enable slow mode, are we not going to be able to spam? Or can we spam? We Look at him spam. Look at that spam. Nick spam. We can spam with the best of them. All right. See you guys.